1953, Earth experienced a war of the worlds. Common bacteria stopped the aliens, but it didn't kill them. Instead, the aliens lapsed into a state of deep hibernation. Now the aliens have been resurrected, more terrifying than before. In 1953, aliens started taking over the world. Today, they're taking over our bodies. Is there anything new? Zip. Zero. Zed. Nothing. The bad guys are maintaining radio silence. Desk Gertrude. Ah, catch this riff. Don't know what it's all about, but you gotta admit them bad guys sure got rhythm. Is there anything from the Cray on this? No, definitely not into musical appreciation. It's still computing. Suzanne, tell me something. Tell me. Well. Using Dr. Forrester's notes on the bacteria that infected the aliens in 1953, exposing these on paper, of course, to radiation that's consistent with that of the disposal site. Yes? No bacteria survived the exposure. I was right. Statistically, your theory is possible. No, Suzanne, I am right. Ha <laughs> ha! Took you so long. <laughs> Whoever this is, it better be good. Norton? I'm on my way. The transmission was only a few short bursts, but I managed to pin down the location. Drive hard, and you could be there in about 11 hours. Nah, we'll charter a helicopter. Oh, easy, my friend. Do you know how much that's going to cost? Which is a new world cost, Norton. And where do you go to buy one? You know, if you're right about this, it's all academic anyway. How much farther? Oh, about half a mile, maybe less. If I don't get me some shut eye, I won't be able to bag a deer if it walks up and kisses me. What is it, boy? Tell about the fires. Yeah, big, big, big eyes. Bonfires and their big hands. Oh, big long <laughs> arms. And they would go. Well, right here. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I've never heard such a crock of bull, Colonel. 
I think what we're talking is 150 proof delusions. Maybe. I want a team briefing in 15 minutes. Everybody at 100%. We move out in one hour. Whatever you say, Colonel. as we go until dark. How do you do it? Make yourself go to sleep like that. Body clock. If I don't sleep one hour every five, I'm worthless. to get ourselves killed, okay? I'm gonna get close enough to get some instrument ratings, and I want you to stay back and record everything with a camera. Okay. okay? if I told you. Probably not. Sergeant! You're about to witness a rare event, Doctor. Delta Squad in action. Any time, any place, any objective. Colonel! Colonel, you can't! You've got no idea. You've got no concept of what you're getting into. A few terrorists. Small arms, poorly defended perimeter. My men might even be overprepared, Doctor. Colonel, no! Colonel, you're gonna make a horrible mistake!
Wait here! Suzanne, and get out of here! Where's Suzanne? I told her to wait right here. You'll compromise our position. Come on, we've got to put some distance between us and them. Not without Suzanne. You saw what they did to my men. If those things have her, there's nothing we can do. Iron Horse, we've got to try. Forget her, Harrison. She's had it. I'm not leaving. OK, but I'm digging in. Nothing. You? I never should have brought Suzanne along. It wasn't your fault. Well, whose was it? But she had to be one of the most uptight ladies I've ever met, but at least she believed me. Thank God you're all right. Ugh. I am not uptight. I am a professional. Who does not know how to follow orders. Now, you were supposed to stay out of sight in the woods. You neglected to tell me that those things, aliens or whatever they are, would be crawling all over. By the time I worked my way down here, you and the Colonel were doing your off-road routine, so I figured this would be the best place to weigh things out. Where are they? Long gone. They had their truck hit in a hollow about 200 yards from here. This is weird stuff we're dealing with here, Blackwood. Bolas, terrorists that don't act like terrorists, terrorists that don't die like terrorists. I actually saw a body dissolve after I shot it. We all saw some fairly extraordinary phenomenon, Colonel. When in God's name is somebody going to start explaining things to me? I've already explained as much of it as I understand myself. You've explained nothing, mister. I don't believe in ghosts, and I sure as hell don't believe in aliens from another planet. Excuse me for sounding uptight, but can we argue about this someplace else? Too many variables. Strength unknown. Resources unknown, purposes, goals, locations, unknown, unknown, unknown. I can only tell you what I saw. What we all saw, Uncle Hank. It was horrible. Those things were not people anymore. But I do have a theory about cell face masks. Suzanne, whatever you and Dr. Blackwood saw, no matter how extraordinary, cannot be considered as evidence. <sighs> well, talk to your colonel. He was there. The Colonel and I talked at length. Admittedly, something incredible did take place. However, Colonel Ironhorse is not yet ready to attribute those events to aliens from another world. He's more comfortable believing the Russians have some secret weapon that makes us all see things that aren't really there. Colonel Ironhorse is a highly effective warrior, Doctor. He's been trained to deal in absolutes. In this case, General, he is absolutely wrong. I agree. And so do a few of my superiors. However, they want this entire matter kept hush hush. Hold it, General. Nobody's going to silence me the same way they silenced Dr. Forrester 35 years ago. What happened to your adoptive father, Doctor, was unfortunate for all of us. However, the President, my superiors, would rather this not become a political issue. They don't want to ignore this, they want it kept quiet. And I'm here to offer you a job. Find the aliens, Doctor. 
and stop them before they do more harm. And I can do things my way? Completely. Your own people, your own methods, anything you want. Naturally, we'll have to establish certain security procedures. What kind of procedures? Nothing, I assure you, doctor, you wouldn't do yourself. Aside from that, you have a blank check. But you'll need a cosigner. I believe you all know one another. You haven't said a word for two hours. Why do we have to move? Honey, it's business. It's always business. It's only for a little while. It's always for a little while. Debbie, I know it's difficult to leave your friends, but you'll make new ones. I hate making new friends. Debbie. I know relocating is inconvenient, but it's only short term until we neutralize the problem. What makes you think that's neutralizing? God, I really like that word. The aliens will be that easy. I don't care how many of those things are out there, Doctor. They have no heavy weapons, no resources. We'll track them down. We'll make alien sushi out of them. This is it. Welcome to government property number 348, also known as the cottage. 25 totally secure acres in the middle of nowhere. Without proper authority, No one comes in. No one gets out. Hmm. Makes pizza deliveries a bit rough. A horse! You didn't tell me about a horse. Honey, I didn't know about a horse. Can I... Can I go see it? I thought you hated making new friends. Oh, Mom. Anyway, you always promised I could take riding lessons. I always said maybe you could. Be careful. Supercomputer? Forward, Gertrude. <laughs> what did you do, Colonel? Read my Christmas list. Whoa, Gertrude. Well, you can't be expected to do the job if you don't have the equipment, Mr. Drake. Well, keep up that attitude, Colonel. I might even get to like you. Well, someone sure spent a fortune. Well, the government wants to see that everyone's happy, Doctor. Well, now all I have to do is find, no, better yet, create bacteria that is impervious to radiation, lethal to aliens, and absolutely harmless to humans. Maybe I could just cure the common cold in my spare time. Well, if you find yourself with any spare time, Doctor, you must be doing something wrong. Uh, have a nice day. Doctor? Somebody obviously wanted to make me feel right at home. Perfect copy of your office, isn't it? As if my life before this thing didn't matter. Or never really existed at all. Since my great-great-grandfather was shaman of our tribe. What's a shaman? A shaman is a spiritual leader, sometimes called a medicine man. He is the most respected man in the tribe, more even than the chief. 
Anyway, the warriors, they brought their strange discovery to my great-great-grandfather to find out what it meant. What was it? It was a flat rock with drawings on it that no one had ever seen before. It was very old, too. What kind of drawings? I'm glad you asked that. They were of a man wearing a bowl that covered his entire head. And his eyes glowed, and he carried a wand. Magic wand? What seemed like magic, because the wand, it threw out bolts of light. Well, my great-great-grandfather, he took the rock, and he went into the desert for one moon. That's about a month. And when he came back, he gathered everyone in the tribe together. And in a very strong voice, even though he was very weak and hungry, he said, We know that our people were the first to walk this earth, but others came before us. Wow, what did they do then? They fired him and got themselves a new shaman. You made that up. <laughs> Only the last part, Debbie. The rest... I... I don't know. Bedtime. Mm -hmm. mm, complain while you're getting ready for bed. Good night, everyone. Good night. Night. Good night. Good night. You folks gonna be here long? Oh, we hope not, Mr. Kensington. I mean, no offense, man. None taken, Dr. Blackwood. You stay here as long as you have to. I guess I'd better check the security system and turn in. Good night, all. Colonel, you really believe that story? Indian folklore, Mr. Drake. Nothing more, nothing less. Funny thing about folklore, almost always there's an element of truth in it. well. We're strong again, and ready to resume our invasion. Not too hastily, comrade. Our ships on board computers must finish their pre-flight checks first. We've been paid. Doc, I'm getting nowhere fast. Without more information, all the supercomputers in the world can't decipher the alien radio signals. We'll have to reconceptualize our approach. You're talking to the king of reconceptualization. What we need, good buddy, is a clue. I mean, even linguists needed the Rosetta Stone before they could read hieroglyphics. We got diddly squat. Well, we've got Dr. Forster's old research. We've got photocopies of some alien maps. Maybe you can find your Rosetta Stone in here. Norton. The number three mean anything special to you? It sure meant something special to the aliens. Think about it. Their ships flew in groups of three. Their optics were divided into three units. They attacked their targets from three different directions. Even their weapons, the bowlers, had three weighted ends. Three, Norton. Think three. I know the answer is there. Number three. I'll think on it. What do we got to lose, huh? Suzanne. Huh? You miss dinner. Well, you sleep one hour out of five, I miss meals, especially when I'm working. You find something interesting? Hmm. Have a look. What is it? You tell me. This is the tissue sample you took from the dissolved body? Mm-hmm. 
But it's not exactly human anymore. Then what is it? Half human, half alien. It's as if the cells from both species have merged to create something new, unique. And this sustains your cell phase matching theory? Oh, no, Dr. Blackwood. You're not going to peg me to a conclusion that I haven't had time to prove yet. Fair enough, Dr. McCullough. Suzanne? Yeah. Good work. Thanks, Harrison. Thanks a lot. Bingo! I've got it! Harrison, Iron Horse! Yes, absolutely, undoubtedly. Ha <laughs> ha, they said it, couldn't they? <laughs> I cracked the alien lingo. By the way, Doc, thank you for telling me to think three. This is all base three. It's beautiful. <laughs> and this is what I came up with. One, two, zero, one. No, 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 no. no. The top line is two to the seventh power. The bottom line's to the third. Now, two to the seventh is 128. And two to the third is eight. But what do the numbers represent? Well, am I supposed to do everything around here? How am I supposed to know what it represents? Maybe it's a coded message. It's too primitive. Even crude codes use large prime numbers as keys. When the soldier's right, he's right on. This is no code. This is pure. But pure what? Yeah, we're overthinking this. We're digging too deep. We're giving the aliens too much credit. Assuming the obvious? Thereby overlooking the obvious. I think I'm missing something. You'll have to go on one of Harrison's little field trips. You've loaded all Dr. Forster's material into the crate. Stayed up all last night. How long to run a basic substitution program? Those numbers versus the material in the alien documents. <laughs> With this little baby here, about 10 seconds. on their maps? Why not? Right there. That's Kellogg Air Force Base. They're planning to overrun the base. I've got to get General Wilson on this immediately. Think about it first, Colonel. Think about it the way an alien would. Why attack an Air Force base? Now, you said it yourself, without resources, without weapons, even at full strength. Even by surprise, their attack would have no chance of success. But there's still something here we're not seeing. And we won't. Until we start looking at things the way that aliens do. You expect me to climb into the heads of these, these creatures? You got to give me more to go on. OK, they're soldiers. No. The place where the Air Force stores all its UFO evidence. You mean Hangar 18, or Building 18 at Wright-Patterson? Forget it, Doctor. That's all a myth. No. Hangar 18 is the myth, Colonel. That's disinformation created by the military. Hangar 15, that's the real McCoy. I don't believe it. Dr. Forster did. It's in his papers. I think now might be the time to call General Wilson. Ask him if it's a myth. Hey, Vic, you need a hand? 
Sleep. According to General Wilson, the government has had three of the alien ships mothballed in Hangar 15 since 1953. You want to guess as to the location of Hangar 15? Kellogg Air Force Base? Right smack dab in the middle. You've read the material, Colonel. You know what happens if the aliens get their hands on those ships. I haven't had a chance to test this properly, but... I just hope it works. I sure hope we don't have to use it. You ready? Let's go. Did General Wilson approve of our plan? Enough to grease the wheels with the brass at Kellogg Air Force Base and to give us the specs on Hangar 15 security system. Well, I'll be able to have this deciphered before you even get there. <laughs> we'll crack that safe with no problem. What the hell is this? Nothing, just some bacteria. Oh, don't worry, Colonel. It's absolutely non-toxic to us under normal circumstances. Colonel, can we go now? We have a lot of ground to cover. Just one moment, doctors. There's one last detail. You're in the army now. Inspection in five minutes. I'm told the outlying areas of your base have ideal terrain for my company's survival training, sir. Well, if I'd had some advance notice, I could have made the arrangements. I know what you mean, General. It was last minute for us, too. Special mission coming up. I can't really talk about it. Middle East? Oh, it's about time. Let me have Captain Williams take you on your survey. It's not really necessary, sir. I think we can find our own way. General Wilson said that we shouldn't inconvenience you in any way, sir. Always glad when the Air Force can lend a helping hand to you Army boys and gals. Keep me apprised. I have to get a piece of that action. Yes, sir. Let's go, Corporal. Army. Thanks, Colonel. I don't believe in guns. I'm sure the aliens will respect that. Okay, let's go, people. Let's go. set on this end. Wait 10 seconds and then fire away.
Yeah. Dr. Forrester was right. Come on, we've got work. Sure, we have to do it this way, Doctor. You tell me. According to the research, these ships produced a shield making them impervious to a nuclear blast. Doctor? How are you supposed to fly these things? Nobody ever figured that out. Dr. Foster speculated that the aliens were somehow able to use brainwave impulses. Here, you're the expert. Needing that? Warn me next time you sneak up. Oh, I hope not. I'm not even sure it will work. Two down, one to go. What is it? are good guys. Considering what we're doing, Doctor, even the good guys are bad guys. Bad, bad guys. How much time do we have? If we're not out of here in ten minutes, we're part of the fireworks. Those are my men. Not anymore.
trouble believing in aliens. Now! Watch a little fast, Colonel. did it. General Wilson is taking care of the Joint Military Forces Board of Inquiry. I'm told that unofficially, of course, the board is predisposed to lay the blame on an unnamed terrorist organization. A whole lot closer to the truth than they'll ever realize. I'm just glad all of this is behind us. Mm. Is it? Is it really? Our council allows us no margin for failure. The primitives have proven to be unexpectedly clever. Their cleverness will not save them. We will improvise as long as we meet the deadline. Yeah.